Our objectives for this lesson are familiarization to basic parent functions and applying transformations to these functions. Let's have the first one, constant function. In constant function, the output value is the same for every input value. Thus, it produces a horizontal line. The parent function for this is f of x is equal to a, where a is any constant. Let's have an example. f of x is equal to 2, and the graph will look like this. Notice that even though you have different values of x, your y remains the same. That is why it is called constant. Let's have another one. f of x is equal to negative 1, so the graph will look like this. y is equal to negative 1. Another basic function is the linear function, and it produces a straight line with a constant slope. The parent function for this is f of x is equal to x. Whatever is your x, that is also your y. Let us plot some points. If your x is 1 and your y is 1, they'll meet at 1, 1. If your x is 2 and your y is 2, they'll meet at point 2, 2. If your x is 3 and your y is 3, they'll meet at point 3, 3. Continue doing this and you'll have this graph. Now, this parent function graph passes through 0, 0 and has a slope of 1. Next one, absolute value function. Absolute value function has V-shaped graph. And the parent function for this is f of x equals the absolute value of x. So whatever is your x, get the absolute value of that, and that will be your y. Let us plot some points. If your x is 1, the absolute value of 1 is also 1, so you'll have this point. If your x is negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, so you'll have this point. If your x is 2, the absolute value of 2 is 2, so you'll have this point. If your x is negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, so you have this point. Continue doing this and you will have this graph. Absolute value function has vertex, and this parent function has a vertex that passes through 0, 0. Another function is quadratic function, and it has a U-shaped graph called parabola. Parabola has a line of symmetry, and the highest exponent is 2. The parent function for this is f of x equals x squared, where x is not equal to 0. If this is 0, this whole thing will become 0 and you will be back to constant function. Now let us plot some points. To plot some points, substitute any value for x and then square that to get the corresponding value of y. Let us say your x is 1. 1 is squared is still 1, so you'll have this point. Let us say your x is negative 1. Negative 1 is squared is also 1, so you'll have this point. Let's say your x is 2. 2 is squared is 4, so you will have this point. Negative 2 squared is also positive 4, so you will have this point. Continue doing this and you will have this graph. Quadratic function also has vertex. And this parent function, the vertex passes through 0, 0. Another basic function is rational function, and this is the ratio of two polynomial expressions. The parent function for this is f of x equals 1 over x, where x is not equal to 0. If this is 0, then the function will become undefined. To plot some points, let us substitute any value for x, and then we perform 1 divided by that value to determine the value of y. So let us say our x is 1. So we have 1 divided by 1 is 1. So if our x is 1, our y is also 1, so we have this point. How about if x is 2? So we have 1 divided by 2, or 1 half. So if our x is 2, our y is 1 half, so we have this point. Continue doing this, and you will have this graph. Now, what if our x is a negative number? Let us say negative 1. So 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So if our x is negative 1, our y is also negative 1. We have this point. How about if x is negative 2? So we have 1 divided by negative 2 is negative 1 half. So if our x is negative 2, our y is negative 1 half. So we have here. Continue doing this and you will have this graph. 
Rational functions have asymptotes, but we are not going to tackle that in this video. Let us move to our second objective, applying transformations to basic parent functions. Here is the summary of the transformations that we are going to discuss. f of x is equal to a times the quantity bx minus c raised to n plus d. The effect of a is a vertical stretch or shrink. If a is greater than 1, then the graph will be stretched vertically. If a is less than 1, then the graph will shrink vertically. If you see a negative sign here, then the graph will reflect on the x-axis. Now for letter b. The effect of this is a horizontal stretch or shrink. If b is greater than 1, the graph will shrink horizontally. If b is less than 1, the graph will stretch horizontally. If you see a negative sign here, then the graph will reflect on the y-axis. Now for letter C. This is a little bit tricky. If you see minus C, the graph will move to the right. If you see plus C, the graph will move to the left. And last one is D. If you see plus D, the graph will move up. If you see minus D, the graph will move down. Let us have the first one. Linear function. You already know the matter function as well as its corresponding graph. Now let us apply transformation. f of x is equal to x plus d. What is the effect of plus d here? Let's have an example. f of x is equal to x plus 2. Now adding plus 2 here will move the graph two units up. In here, the graph passes through 0, 0. If it moves two units up, then it will now pass through 0, 2. Let's see. Let's have another example. f of x is equal to x minus 1. Adding minus 1 will move the graph 1 unit down. So from 0, 0, it will now pass through 0, negative 1. Next, we have the absolute value function. Here is the mother function and its corresponding graph. Let us apply transformation. f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus c. So what is the effect of minus c? Let's have an example. f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. Minus 2 will make the graph move 2 units to the right. So from 0, 0, the vertex will now move to 2, 0. Another example f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus c this time. So let's have f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 1. So plus 1 here will make the graph move 1 unit to the left. So from 0, 0, the vertex will now be at negative 1, 0. Another one, rational function. So here is the mother function and its corresponding graph. Now let us apply some transformations. So I have two transformations here. Sample. f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1 plus 2. Minus 1 will make the graph move 1 unit to the right. And plus 2 will make the graph move 2 units up. Allow me to use a point to determine later if we transform our graph correctly. This graph passes through 1, 1. Moving 1 unit to the right and 2 units up, I will end up here. Now, after moving the graph, this portion should fall here. Let's see. 1 unit to the right, and 2 units up. That's correct. Next one, quadratic function. So here is the mother function as well as its corresponding graph. Let us apply some transformations. Sample f of x is equal to negative 2 times the quantity x minus 4 squared plus 3. So let us take the transformation step by step. Negative 4 here will make the graph move 4 units to the right. So let us see the vertex. It will now be at 4, 0. Next, positive 3 here will make the graph move 3 units up. So from here, the vertex will be 1, 2, 3 should be here. These two here will vertically stretch our graph by a factor of 2. Let's see. 
And finally, this negative will make our graph reflect on the x-axis, making our graph face downwards. The good thing about knowing all the transformations is that it is applicable in all functions. For now, let us check your understanding. Pause this video if you need more time. Here are the correct answers. For number 1, because of plus 4, the vertex move 4 units up. For number 2, because of plus 5, the graph move 5 units to the left. And for number 3, because of plus 1, the graph move 1 unit to the left. And because of minus 3, the graph move 3 units down. Gets?